Hello visionaries, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Talbert. I'm the founder and CEO of Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. So we've been talking about holding companies in a few of my previous videos, and I've mentioned the option of an IP holding company. In particular, I've discussed the fact that holding companies can generate income by leasing assets to its subsidiaries, similar to how McDonald's leases land to its franchisees. But in this video specifically, I just want to focus on the intellectual property. So let's jump right into it. Just to recap, intellectual property is property of the mind, and your creative genius is an asset. Those assets are generally protected in five ways. Trademarks, copyrights, patents, trade secrets, and I like to throw in their contracts. If you need help understanding the difference between either one of those, I have multiple videos that discuss the differences and I'll link them down in the description box below. It is important to note that none of these methods of protection are mutually exclusive. What I mean is that you can employ different types of IP protection for one asset. For example, let's say you have a business name and a logo. You can protect both the business name and the logo as a trademark, but you could also protect the logo under copyright law as a two-dimensional piece of artwork. Why? because a trademark and a copyright protect different things. So you are not limited to protecting your intellectual property with just one method of protection. This becomes important when we discuss our topic for today, which is whether you should assign or license your intellectual property, or as I like to call it, whether you should sell or rent your intellectual property. I think that just helps to conceptualize it a little bit better. So first, let's talk about assigning or selling your IP. Once you have secured your intellectual property rights, meaning that you've trademarked your business name, or you've protected that recipe through a trade secret, or you've copyright protected the lyrics to the song that you wrote, sometimes it may be more convenient or valuable to let someone else use your intellectual property in exchange for payment. When you assign your IP rights, you are essentially selling your rights permanently in exchange for some particular sum of money. The same way you would sell real property like your car or your house, that's the same thing that happens when you assign your intellectual property rights. You transfer all the rights and you relinquish all the control. On the flip side, you can become a landlord and you can license or rent out your IP. When you license your IP rights, you maintain ownership. You maintain control. Again, going back to the house analogy, if you rent out your house, you still own it. And you can evict a tenant if they don't pay you on time or if they violate the terms of the lease. So through a licensing agreement, <clears throat> this is where the contracts come in, you can rent out your IP for a fee, which is called a royalty. And your licensing agreement should outline specific terms, such as whether you're granting an exclusive or a non-exclusive license. This determines whether or not you, as the licensor, can rent out the same asset to someone else. Let me explain. Let's just say that you're a business coach, because that seems to be the career of the times right now. And you created a methodology that consistently results in your clients doubling their revenue within six months. You patent your methodology. And now Harvard Business School wants to use your patent to teach your methodology in their business courses. You can offer Harvard an exclusive license that restricts you from allowing any other person from using your patent or you could offer Harvard a non-exclusive license, which would allow you to 
license your methodology to Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and Stanford. Some other considerations among so many that you might consider is where the IP can be used. Can it only be used in a particular state? Can it be used nationwide? Can it be used worldwide? You need to decide what your territory will be for your license. You can also determine the length of time that this permission is granted. Maybe you're granting the use of your IP for six months or for one year or until there's a triggering event that dictates termination of the use. You get to decide. You can also negotiate how compensation is offered for the use of your IP, whether it's a lump sum, whether it's a monthly payment, whether it's a fixed or variable percentage of gross revenue or some other sales marker. There are a lot of considerations to think about when you are negotiating a licensing agreement. Now, remember I mentioned earlier that one asset could be protected in multiple ways. So there may be an instance where it's beneficial to assign one part of your IP and license the other. So for example, let's just say you created a special seasoning that is protected as a trade secret, but the name of the seasoning is also protected by a trademark. There could be a scenario where you assign the trade secret to a company like McCormick and get you a nice little lump sum and then turn around and license the trademark for a monthly payment or for a percentage on gross revenue of all the sales of your seasoning. Now you've just created passive income for yourself. So that's something to think about too. This is one of the reasons why it is so important to protect your intellectual property. It truly is an investment that can create a huge return. So as we wrap this up, I wanna bring it all together and put a bow on it. You can either assign your IP rights which is the equivalent of selling it outright, or you can license your IP, which is the equivalent of leasing it out for a particular purpose or period of time. But you can't do either until you first secure your intellectual property rights, which can be done again through either a trademark, copyright, patent, trade secret, and like I like to throw in there, contracts. Advantages to assigning your IP rights is generally you get a big lump sum of money all at once. The disadvantage is you no longer have control and you no longer have ownership. Some advantages to licensing include the fact that you get to maintain ownership, you get to maintain control, you get to create passive income for yourself, you get to create new business opportunities, and it allows you to enter into new markets or industries. Some disadvantages to licensing is the fact that some people can and will abuse the licensing agreement, which leads to IP infringement and we go on a court. Another disadvantage to licensing is that a party could use your IP in a way that is damaging or harming to your brand or reputation. And then again, we go on a court. Well, I'll leave it there for now. Let me know your questions in the comments. If you are in the market for a licensing agreement, go ahead to talbertlawoffice.com and check out our TLO Marketplace. I will link it down in the description box below. We have template, copyright, and trademark licensing agreements for you ready to go right now. Don't forget, share this video with a friend and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. I'll see you in the next video.